So here is everything that I take with me on a typical uh, chainsaw milling job. This is what I'd call my full kit prepared for anything. Uh, I have my, uh, my mill, my chainsaw mill and saw. I have a uh, smaller but still pretty capable saw to buck anything up that I need to. I have a, uh, that's just an all purpose ax, wedge banger, limmer, whatever I need an ax to do. I have a winch in case I need to move or stabilize anything. And the reason I'm taking this is because I am going to be milling on a sloped area into a creek bed. I have a, um, I have a large bar that I can use to move stuff around. Uh, in here, just as kind of my random assortment, got rope. I have, uh, this is a new D-ring shackle from Harbor Freight that I'm kind of excited to try out. Super cheap, seems to be okay. I've got a toe strap. Um, I've got uh, just a, uh, um, a strap I can throw around a tree for a support. Um, for an anchor point, I have impact driver. No nails, nails are terrible for chainsaw milling. Uh, you can use them if you're in a real pinch, but what you really want the way I work is to make sure stuff is plumb, square, and flat. And so I use screws for that control and an impact. I uh, got my gloves, screwdriver, uh, files, um, all that good stuff. And I will show you how, of course, chaps. And, you know, chainsaw milling is, I think, one of the safest things you can do with a chainsaw. Um, the, the typical things that you'd need to worry about <clears throat> with a chainsaw, you, you know, a tree's already on the ground. It can, the log can roll, um, you know, all kinds of things can happen. But, um, you know, the, the chaps really, for me, you know, I guess safety's there too, but when you mill, you're gonna throw chips and, and powder like you can't believe. And if you've been kneeling in that for a few hours, you'll, you'll want some chaps or, you know, coveralls or something. But I will show you how I set up my chainsaw mill and uh, it is simple, effective, cheap. I use a 10 foot two by six and you wanna make sure it's pretty darn straight. You know, this is, this is the homeless despot's finest. Um, so that's, that's pretty level. Your first cut's only gonna be as level and flat as your board. And uh, I've got just a two by 10 um, and a couple of two by fours for supports. Basically what I'm gonna do is there's your chainsaw mill. That's kind of the general idea, except on the top is gonna to be that two by six, and then these are gonna go into either end of the log. And sometimes if you've got a lot of taper on the log, you might need to do this to go up or down. So really simple, really cost-effective, uh, works great. I've milled thousands of board feet of, uh, of lumber that way and uh, it's super portable. I can take it anywhere. If I have a couple pieces in the back of my truck, I don't need to worry about somebody, you know, lifting it um, <laughs> because it's it's scrap foot and it's scrap wood. And uh, nobody, lumber isn't that expensive that people are trying to lift an 18 inch uh, old, <laughs> old piece of two by four. So, uh, so this is my setup here and uh, we're gonna hit the job site. So here we've got the pine. I'm gonna go after this guy first, cut that one up. Um, and then over here, we've got uh, several more sections of pine, kind of like a jigsaw puzzle that I'm going to see if I can cut up efficiently or actually over here, that's a nice poplar. Wow, and that poplar is, it's downhill. Um, actually, I might start with this poplar. So I think that's what we're gonna do. But uh, you can see how far back this wood goes. So, the first thing that you're gonna wanna do when you get to a chainsaw milling site is look in the back of your truck and discover that you forgot your bar oil and uh, fuel. <laughs> So, good thing I am extremely close, uh, so that didn't cost too much. But, okay, so uh, I ended up going with this one just because I don't have to do really anything to it for prep work. I can pretty much just screw down my 2x6 and, uh, and get to work. So that's what we're going to do now.
anybody that says you can't do what I'm doing. Look at that. Dead flat. That is gonna be nice and sturdy. You do wanna take your time and be careful with your first cut. But uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, trim back that tree. I'm gonna leave, or that stump. I'm gonna leave that stump here. I'm gonna cut it lower though, so my, uh, my mill doesn't hit it. But I wanna leave enough that it keeps my log in place for safety. So let's get cutting. And if you're gonna be doing a lot of chainsaw milling with a, with this guy, I highly recommend getting a, uh, um, a ratcheting multi-size uh, wrench because it is gonna save you so much time, I promise you. And these mills are very basic and uh, uh, very simple tight spaces so the first one I'm gonna go down I think four inches maybe no I'll probably go down five okay and uh, let's just make sure I'm gonna to wanna to move my handle over so it sits on that two by six. Let's get that first cut. This G660 starts the exact same way as a steel, full choke. You're gonna to wanna to use that decomp valve until it burps. All right, good. Move it to half choke, hit the decomp. Look at that. This is over 20 inches wide. Look at that cut. You know, this is just one two by six. Um, get yourself an ax so you can use the, the bark as a shim and a support. And I think I'm gonna start cutting um, uh, probably two inch boards out of this now. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. <laughs> Unless your angles are flipped, then it's every man for himself. saw is cooling down we are not quite to the center the pith uh, but we're close enough that you get these really cool cathedrals really really nice I mean this is fantastic wood uh, 
the uh, the stuff you get at the hardware store, Home Depot, that's going to be stuff that's, you know, 10, 15 years old. This is probably 30 to 40, if you count those rings, maybe even older. There's a lot of sap on there. But uh, look at, just look at how, look at how nice that is. Beautiful wood. So I think I'm going to start cutting uh, one inch slabs now, um, or boards now rather, just because we're getting to that really nice vertical grain. I was kicking myself after I did it. I should have got it on camera. If you don't buck up a log to the full length that you're cutting, you're gonna lose, I don't know, probably three and a half inches at a time just to the mill. Cause your, your mill, your bar's in the middle of your mill. So you leave that outer, you know, crust on the table. Uh, and you can just mill progressively smaller pieces and you know, for every run you lose four inches. So over four cuts, that's a foot and a half. You know, that's a lot to give up. Um, I don't want to do that. And so I essentially just give up four, you know, three, whatever this is, I don't know, three and a half inches on each cut. And after each cut, you take your ax and you just pop that piece of wood up. If you're milling green lumber, it just works super simple. And then you can clean it up if you want. You don't really have to. Um, so that's how I do it. Whew. All right. You can see how tall that is. <laughs> it's huge. So you might think a five pound ax is heavier than you need, but the extra weight really comes in handy, especially with a straight handle. So watch this. Oh, look at that. That's why it didn't pop out. There's a big old knot in there. So, look at all this pine resin. All that fat wood. So that's why it didn't pop out that time. Egg on my face, but it smells wonderful. Now comes the hard part. I'm beat. So here's what we ended up pulling out of the woods today. Um, so hard to get a sense for scale. Just uh, 
based off of putting them on a video here. But bark to bark, that's 21 and a half. And that's about, so that's gonna be about 20, about 20 inches after we get the bark off. This is a bit bigger at 22. Here we've got another 21 and a half. And uh, finally, we've got this is the small, the smallest in width at 19 and a half. But height wise, check this out. Full eight foot and four, that's five inches. Eight foot, five inches. So, um, you know, if we did, uh, we could do a basic calculation and figure out the board foot in, uh, in each of these. Uh, and there's just a significant amount of lumber. My yard smells amazing right now. It's just, uh, just all pine. So I'm a happy man. And I'll see if I can get myself in a shot and, um, and just give you a, a true sense for the size of these things. Okay, so here they are. I have my, my safety flip flops on today, plus socks, critically important. All right, everybody, we'll see you next time.